All right, hey, it's time for a quick uh, little 2023 Monster Energy AMA Supercross preview show here. Uh, I like to take advantage of the fact that we've got a guy here whose knowledge I would put up against anybody in the industry for being a historian, knowing what's going on, knowing the riders, knowing the technical side of stuff. We've got uh, Rick Hamer Jackson here, better known as Hammer Time. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you, man. All the way from uh, down from Kelowna, BC. We're having a good time here. Check it out, buddy. The sun is out. Your worst nightmare may not come true. I haven't seen sun in 16 days until yesterday afternoon, so <laughs> Billy and I took advantage and went down to a little oceanfront pub and watched the World Junior, talked the waitresses into putting it on for us and had a bunch of drinks and a good time. Yeah, good stuff for sure, man. Yeah. All right, so we're down here. It's been a bit of a strange lead up because as we say, there's been so much rain. Uh, I came down here and normally we'd be, you know, cruising around the practice tracks, but there was really not much going on. Everybody took off to the high desert to find some dry stuff. So I'm sure you've seen lots of uh, video and everything up on, uh, up on YouTube and up on social media and stuff like that. But uh, it's Friday morning. It's actually pretty cool as you can see we're here but uh wearing our jackets and things but uh yeah. the sun is out like i said uh it's before media day while we're shooting this so when you're watching this well i will have been down to media day and able to see some of the top guys actually already on the track and stuff like that but uh we now have the entry list uh, finalized for the 250 West, so we know who's gonna be there. We got some uh, crazy action gonna happen in the 450 class with a record, I think 13 former champions of uh, one uh, awesome. class or another. But uh, let's, let's, um, let's talk about a few things here, just uh, as you see it, because like I say, I wanna take advantage of having Rick here and uh, be able to talk to him about it. The guy's got knowledge, like uh, you absorb everything, buddy. I watch everything, I listen to everything, I love everything, I love the sport. Uh, whenever I'm not working my ass off doing what I do for a living, I'm usually focused on something moto related and that's never changed. I've probably been to, I don't know, 20, 25 Anaheim Supercrosses and it's the best day of the year for me every year. It's like Christmas morning, so pretty fired up for this one. This and the US Open are your two favorite days. This and the US Open, you know it. <laughs> and maybe a UFC fighter. Uh, a bunch yeah. of UFCs. Oh, yeah. yep. All right, well, let's, uh, let's talk about the 250 West. I mean, the big news, obviously, uh, Jet Lawrence is gonna be racing it. Uh, there's more stuff going on. We've got, uh, you've got some ideas on uh, how you think this is gonna go down. Yeah, I think he, ever, we've known for a long time that Jet's gonna be racing West. And then uh, the big news in my mind that dropped was that uh, Austin Forkner is gonna meet him up in the West. So. Um, you know, I think if you look at the start of Forkner's career, which has been a little bit derailed in recent years with injuries, but I believe he won like 11 of his first 22 Supercross races. So he's got crazy raw speed. He knows how to win. Um, and obviously he's crazy. I mean, he's not going to be intimidated by Jet. And if all those hard hits that he's taken haven't, you know, taken a little bit of that speed away, and he's still frisky and, and he's fresh and he's healthy coming in, I think he's the one guy that can you know, have a good chance to beat Jet straight up. So, um, you know, that was the most exciting, exciting news that I had dropped on me recently. Right, for sure. And kind of like what, um, kind of like what I, kind of what we were talking about, uh, like what I say about in the 450 class too. For Jet, I think there's maybe not as much onus on him to come out and win round one. I, I think he's a guy that's obviously a championship guy. Some of these other guys want to come out, prove a point and say, listen, I'm not, I'm not intimidated by these guys. Yeah. I'm going to come out. So it's, I mean, you got to throw the cliche out there. You can't win it in the round one, right? But just, so some of these guys want to come out and win round one. They yep. won't win the series necessarily, but they want to come out, prove that point. A guy like Forkner wants to come out. If if he's right behind Jed, they're gonna, all these guys are going to want to show him a wheel for sure. For sure. Good point, Billy. And I think, um, you know, if, if it's one of those things where Jet just comes out and has an easy glide to the win, you know, that's going to set a tone and shake everybody else's confidence. But if somebody can get in there and put a wheel in on him, um, you know, I think Forkner might be the guy. Obviously, you know, you're probably going to lead into a few of the other guys that uh, are showing up. And it's a pretty, pretty deep west. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be exciting, like round one every year. You don't know who's going to come ready and fast and, and, and healthy for sure as well. So, Right, and I know a guy that you like to talk about. You've been watching a lot of a background kind of guy. The uh, Well, I say background because of in the videos and stuff, but uh, Levi Kitchen, the new guy coming out. I know you're, uh, you're a bit of a fan. I'm a huge fan. I love his style. I mean, he's, uh, he's all over the bike. He's, he's got crazy style. He seems to be able to get the power to the ground everywhere. I, I, I look at his style. He's kind of like... I was saying last night we were having a laugh. He's like a little bit of a mix of uh, Lance Smail, you know. He's way over the top, you know. He's working the bars and everything else, and, and he's got a little bit of Cameron McAdoo in him. I mean, um, and he's shown really good speed too. Like when uh, he he beat Jet straight up in an outdoor national moto last year. Then he got hurt a little bit, but um, 
you know, some of the things that you can see, you know, if you watch the Deegan channel and whatnot, um, obviously, you know, when they're showing practice um, down at the goat farm with Star Racing, you know, it's pretty much focused on Hayden and they don't show guys passing each other and whatnot, but you see a lot of clips of the other guys and uh, Levi looks incredibly fast right now. And, um, you know, it seems to me like he's got a, one of those attitudes where he's taking this really seriously and, and he's fired up. He's been putting little clips on social media that, you know, he's ready to do this. And um, I've got high hopes for him. I love his style. I love watching him ride. Nice, nice. Now you you uh, mentioned uh, McAdoo in there too. I mean, guys like McAdoo, guys like Hampshire, these are guys that obviously think they can win this as well, right? Absolutely. Both of those guys are super fast. Um, RJ is, you know, one of the hardest chargers in the sport and that's for the good or the bad. You know, it, it grabs them some wins here and there, but it also puts them on the ground quite a bit. Um, so, you know, he'll be good. And then, um, you know, it, it was also just dropped that Styles Robertson's going to be on the West as well. And, you know, Styles is another guy like, I mean, it's the toughest sport in the world. Guys are getting hurt and coming back from injuries, but Styles has had a rough few years. But when he is on the bike, I mean, he's shown really good speed. You know, he's got like kind of that podium speed just, you know, laying there ready to be seen. And um, so who knows if he's ready and he's obviously on the best bike in the world now with Star. So let's see what he can do. All right, how about guys like uh, a few other guys here too? They got uh, Pierce Brown, we've got uh, Mitchell Oldenburg, Derek Drake, uh, Max Anstey, who just won the Australian uh, Supercross. We got uh, Phil Nicoletti, A Rod is back. Good gate fillers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't see any of those guys in the top five against some of the guys we've been talking about. Maybe Pierce Brown, I mean, he's got the type of talent, you know, he's. He's really fast, but it, it seems to me like he hasn't quite got the mental side of the game down yet. But, um, you know, he, he, he has shown flashes of speed. The rest of those guys, um, you know, obviously Anstey's shown himself on the world stage. In Supercross, you know, in, in a field like this, I'm not too sure he's just, you know, going to be the guy that's going to be knocking on any podium doors this year or anything like that. But, um, you know, and everybody loves Filthy Phil, of course. He brings that personality and the flair to the West. And um, Doesn't like he, me. Doesn't like you. No, well, I mean, hey. <laughs> I'm on the list. You dug your grave on that one. <laughs> I'm on the list. But, um, yeah, and of course, um, you know, Phil's now uh, got the new big buck contract with Jets and Donuts. So uh, he's the first sponsored rider by Jet Lawrence's uh, donut company. And, you know, the big thing with motocross, everyone's pissed off that you can't sell your merch. Uh, in the stadiums and in the pits and whatnot. Well, I guess Jet's such a big name that they made a concession for him <laughs> and uh, his donuts are apparently going to be in every stadium throughout the whole Supercross series and a byproduct of that is uh, Filthy Phil getting a little bit of that budget. So that's good for Phil. Nice, nice. Okay, so let's, uh, oh, I guess we know what we should talk about. We got uh, Cole Thompson, we've got Julian Bennick and we've got Parker Eels, the Canadian boys uh, getting out there. Should be uh, interesting to watch them. Uh, obviously, Cole Thompson, kind of a, a proven Proven Supercross commodity out there. Should be uh, some good things to watch from him. Julian Bennett coming back off of his injury again, so hopefully we can keep him on the bike, get him uh, get him through some of these. And Parker Eels, man, just a yeah. relative newcomer to Supercross. He did uh, race one last year, but uh, be interesting to see them. Yeah, I just saw Parker Moray Eels out at Hemet, <laughs> and uh, he looked good. He's ripping out there. So uh, caught up with him and uh, and Young Springman. So saw those guys and. Um, you know, it, it, it's always fun, you know, you never know how the Canadians are going to do. Obviously their equipment's not up there with the, the top guys, but um, you know, it's always nice to see them on the gate. I know bennick has been hurt a lot, so hopefully he can keep it on two wheels. And um, you know, Cole Thompson, he's, he, you know, love him or hate him, he's a very proven Supercross rider. So, you know, I can see him easily, in, you know, in the top 10 on a regular basis for sure. And riding on the new the new Canadian back to Heartbeat Hot Sauce out of Thunder Bay, which Chris Elliott, Chris Elliott just told me he got his American citizenship though. So I'm, uh, I'm not sure what to do about that. Hey, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, good to see some Canadian content in there for sure. All right. Now, uh, okay. So if you have to give us a podium, let's uh, let's get you. Let's put you under the under the gun here. Uh, it's, it's 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 tough to say. I mean, you, you, like you you touch on a good point. You know, guys are they realize that they can lose it all in the first round, but. Um, I don't know, for me anyways, I'd like to see Forkner win. Uh, I'd like to see him win straight up. I mean, Jet Lawrence is my favorite guy, like most people, but um, <laughs> I think if, if Forkner can come out and shake him up and show that he's got the speed to run with him and beat him, I think that's gonna set the tone for a more exciting West. So, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm gonna sure. go with those two guys and uh, Kitchener McAdoo. You know? Okay, nice, yeah. nice. Now there are 58 ent entries in the uh, 250 West round one, so we got 58 guys trying to make it in. So that's, uh, you know. Good field. Yeah, good field. Lots of yeah. lots of familiar names in there. Yeah. Actually, it's up on Direct Motocross. If you're going to check that out, you can see the entry list. But uh, yeah, lots of lots of guys are back. Lots of guys that uh, that we've certainly seen up in Canada too. So that's kind of cool to see. Now let's move over to the 450 class. I mean, holy smokes, 13 former champs and stuff like that. I mean, <laughs> does it? We we say this every year. It's the most competitive year ever. But to maybe this actually is. 
it's been it's been going that way though. Yeah, you know, yeah, over sure, over the last sure. three or four years. I mean, every year we say, "Wow, this is the most stacked field ever." Well, you know, like you just said, thirteen champions are in this class. Thirteen alpha males. Thirteen guys that know how to win. Um, and it's just going to be you know a matter of um, you know who's who's the most ready, who's got their confidence up. I know it's um, what sucks for me a little bit is the Austrian bikes are. Yeah, it's. You, you wanted to think when they got to the new chassis last year that it was going to even be a better version of what was arguably the best bike, but they've been having problems in the whoops, they don't turn well, um, you know, you, you got guys like Cooper Webb that are just not looking good, he didn't look good overseas this winter, I mean obviously Cooper knows how to win, he's got the best racecraft arguably in the class other than, I mean how can you say Tomac doesn't have the best racecraft, but outside of, of Eli, so um, you know and with Christian Craig now being on the 450, he's on that bike, so you know, the only guy that's really done something on that bike is Mookie. You know, he was third in the series last year, but you know, he's he's such a strong physical presence on the bike, and he's the, arguably the best whoop rider in the world, anyways. So I want to see how these other guys can can do on that bike, and I hope they got you know everything worked out with it over the winter. Nice. Okay, so there's other the obvious names that we could talk about for sure, and uh, we'll we'll pin you down to a, a podium. But uh, how about the guys moving up? Like we got uh, how about uh, your boy uh, Careless Whisper moving up? Careless Whisper, without the uh, Careless Whisper look anymore, Colt Nichols, uh, I guess uh, factory, he was lucky to get that factory Honda ride sort of at the last minute. Uh, it's a great opportunity for him, uh, no more earrings and uh, no more uh, George Michael look or anything like that. He's, uh, I guess, Honda's the pro team, so uh, they've, they've cleaned him up a bit, but he, he's an awesome rider, he's won a title, you know, he had that bad injury and he was without a bike for a while and, um, you know, now he's on such top equipment and, you know, he's a super, awesome technical rider uh, he's shown that he can win so um, I think he's a real big question you know like let's see what he can do can he poke his nose into that top five in round one who knows right right now geez we are at the beach here we're in Newport here there's a plane flying over the beach with the old yeah. that Joe's banner in the back the classic yeah there you go <laughs> all right now how about guys like uh, the big move everybody has to talk about uh, uh, Ken Roxon going to Suzuki uh, how do you think he looks? What do you think? Is he, he's a guy that can maybe come out and win this thing, obviously? What do you, what do you think? That's my pick for round one. Oh, there yeah, it is. I like the there 94. I, I'm so excited that, um, you know, maybe he can bring that old uh, yellow couch back to the forefront. I mean, everybody <laughs> knows that bike's not, you know, on the level of, of, uh, of the new top bikes. But, um, you know, Kenny was, uh, he was all set to sign with his overseas Honda private winning team. Um, it looks like, um, um, Give me the uh, Chisholm. Chisholm begged him to go and, and ride the Hep bike, which he was scheduled to do, and then that was all but canceled. Chiz said, look, you gotta ride this bike, it's amazing. Kenny came over, jumped on the bike, and said, where do I sign? So uh, <laughs> he's proven that he can win on that bike in the past. He's won titles on that bike, and um, and obviously he's uber excited about it, and uh, you know, when Kenny's fresh and excited and motivated, and um, you know, I think he wants to show Honda that um, they didn't give him, a, him a, enough freedom to do the things he wanted to do with his factory Honda. They kind of made him ride it the way that they felt that it needed to be set up and obviously that was that, that ruined that marriage. So um, if Kenny's ready to come, I mean, you know, and, and, and he's hot, I mean, who's a more talented guy than Ken Roxon? So he's my pick for the win. Well, how about a guy like uh, number nine back? How about Adam Cincerello? Uh, this is a scary one for me. Uh, he's like I, everybody loves Adam. You know, he's he's got a personality like nobody else. He's so good for the sport. Obviously, his raw speed is is second to none. I mean, you know, he comes out, he wins qualifiers, he he sets, you know, times of the day leading up to the night program. Uh, the ugly whispers in the pits are that he's got nerve damage in his shoulder slash arm, and it goes numb, uh, and it goes numb quick. So. Um, I think it's going to be one of those things where, and he's been really quiet in the media too, so we don't know if this is fixed or not fixed. Um, if it's fixed, uh, podium guy for sure, if he's healthy, you know, if it's not fixed, I can see him in the booth and retired by round six. Wow, okay, yeah. all right. Don't like to say that, but that's, the writing's on the wall. I mean, if he's got nerve damage and it's irreparable, you don't ride a factory 450 with, with nerve damage in a, in a dead hand, so, yeah. Right. Okay. Now we talked about uh, perfect riding styles. We talked about the Jet Lawrence 450 class. Got to be. Uh, we got to talk about Chase Sexton, uh, the 23. Do you see him as a title threat uh, this season? He's a supermodel on a dirt bike. Yeah. He's he's got a, he's got everything. I mean, um, he likes the Honda, obviously. What him and Eli did last last summer outdoors. Mm -hmm. 
Um, that's levels above anything I've ever seen on a dirt bike. That was that Carmichael pace. Stewart. Oh, that was Carmichael like... Stewart. And you know what? I think if Carmichael and Stewart were out there with those guys, they would have been boat anchors. You know, I, I think that's a new level of, of, of speed and skill. Uh, you know, Stu is still the best supercross rider of all time. Don't get me wrong as far as raw speed goes. But what those guys did outdoors, they would have dropped anybody in the history of the sport. I'm convinced of that. So. Uh, Sexton, like you say, perfect riding style. Uh, seem, you know, he's got his head together. What he did last summer was the most exciting thing that we could have ever asked for. So, um, yeah, I mean, who's who could say that he can't go out and win? No problem. All right. Uh, well, you know what? The sun is creeping down. It's going to hit our camera very soon here. I can see it on our microphone already. It's coming over. The sun is up, and I love saying that because, you have, like you said, you haven't really seen it since you've been here for two weeks. I've had my e-bike with me, and I haven't ridden it once. You know, I had the, the dreams of riding down the boardwalks in Southern California. <laughs> Didn't even make it out. No, it's just been, it's been unreal. So all I've been doing to uh, fill my time is driving highways and checking out Palm Springs and, you know, just waiting for something waiting for this beautiful weather and most important thing is it looks like it's here for the race and I hope that track dries out and we can have the best day one ever. Okay well as I can see the sun creeping down the uh, the microphone on top of the camera but we got to get you a uh, podium who we got round one. Uh, we didn't really talk about Eli Tomac I mean like I said with the, the 250 class I think Eli the pressure is off of him at round one because he can just come out it's like hey, if I get a whole shot and I get a win like you were saying with Jet great otherwise it's a long season I know I'm there I don't need to go out and prove anything round one. Yeah uh, I I don't think he's going to be in a big hurry to win this race. I mean, he knows how to win titles and I don't think he's going to put himself in a position where, you know, he can get himself out right. of title contention. So I think, you know, in my mind, I don't know that Kenny knows that he's he's a 16, 17 round guy. I see him coming out and laying it down and uh, putting in the win. You know, you got to talk about Barsha a little bit because he mm -hmm. wins round one. Mm -hmm. You know, he's known for that. He's won three of the last four. So right. uh, I'm not going to put him on the box. I'm going to go uh, Kenny, uh, Sexton, and uh, Eli. All right, Kenny, Sexton, and Eli. All right, well, uh, yeah, it's Friday. We're going to all find out. The guessing is about to stop. I mean, this is kind of the fun part where you all kind of talk about it. I mean, the... the Arguments are pretty much the same with any of these that you see. I mean, kind of the same thing. I mean, well, we all see the same sort of things. Yep. I appreciate you because sometimes you see things that uh, others don't actually and some of the riding styles, some of the bike stuff, some of the, yeah. the riders on their bikes, you kind of can tell that they're not happy. You, you, it's kind of cool that you can, you know, you certainly can see all that kind of stuff. So I appreciate you taking the time, buddy. I know- um, Thanks, Billy. I'm gonna try to talk you into staying down for Oakland too, but uh, we'll see. It's been a fun few days. It looks like I got to go home and uh, it's keep earning a living, but uh, who knows if I get motivated, I might hang for a few more days. <laughs> all right, hey, be sure to check it out if you're in Canada watching this, you gotta get the uh, the video pass, so get that so you can watch it all live. Uh, I'll be down there on the floor trying to keep stuff uh, updated and stuff on social media. We'll keep an eye on the Canadians for sure, keep a close watch on them. Man, everybody enjoy the races and we'll, uh, I'm off to media day, so uh, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, we'll see you at the races. Peace. <laughs>